Welcome to the introduction lecture on the abstract and outline assignment for your term project. And remember that science is awesome. Um, so let me share the screen. And your term project assignment, your term paper is set up in steps. Step one, project selection. Some of you still have to get back to me on my comments in project selection. You need to have an approved project topic in order to move on with the next step, which is the project abstract and outline assignment we're doing here. So check the grades to date file I sent if your grade for your project selection is in yellow or red. You need to get a hold of me immediately. Check the project selection assignment and look for comments that I sent you. You should have already received those, but some of you have not yet gotten back to me and I need to clear things up. If it's yellow, I've got some clarification. If it's red, uh, we may need to start over with your topic. We need a good topic. Once you have a good topic, you need at least three papers that you can use to write your paper at this point. I would suggest five references at this point. At least three of them need to be good, solid, peer-reviewed journal articles. But you can also have paper references that include books, websites, um, possibly even interviews. You could go out and do personal interviews with people from industry. And so there are lots of things that you might be able to do, but I at least need three of them to be solid journal article reference papers. Uh, once you do the abstract and outline assignment, the big work is done. You found your papers, you have read them, you taken notes, you've organized your notes, you've done all of the things you need to write your paper, you've organized it into a framework. Now it's just taking all of these bits and pieces and organizing them into your story, making it sound good, making it flow, writing it. And so we're, this next part of the assignment is the real meat, the, the part that really makes or breaks a good term project. Now, some students will find papers and then they'll be tempted to write a mini book report on one paper, then the next paper, then the next paper, and they're a string of mini book reports. That's not what you should do. And that's also one of the things this outline should help you with. Stringing together, organizing those uh, outline pieces into your story you might use very little information on a particular paper, but that's okay, you cite it anyway. Maybe there's an entire paper on chemical controls for downy mildew and lettuce, that's fine. Maybe you cite something in there, even though your story is about cultural controls to reduce the incidence of downy mildew and lettuce and you found an interesting uh, fact in that, uh, in that paper about chemical controls, or at least a piece of data that suggests 85% of the incidence of downy mildew can be controlled using chemical X. Fine. Your story is about cultural control. So you cite that and then use that to say, even though chemicals are 85% effective, it, you can reduce the amount of chemicals and also help protect yourself for those other 15% that chemicals don't work. Or if you're going organic. So again, you might have this one little piece. Does that go in your works cited at the end of your paper? Yeah, you use that piece of information. Do you tell me all of the other things in the paper? No, you only tell me what's part of your story. And that's where this outline comes in handy. It keeps you on focus. What pieces of information fit in my story and which ones 
don't. If they don't fit in your story, out of here. That piece of information you shouldn't use. It's not part of your story. It might be interesting. It might be something you want to share, but don't be tempted to share things that don't fit your outline, your story. So you're going to verify that you have good references. At this point, you should have at least five references and at least three of those being peer reviewed journal articles. But I want to see five at this stage. All right. Um, you're going to create a file with your name, date, and ABT92 in the upper right hand corner of the document, single spaced. And the outline should also be single spaced. I normally do double spaced things. The outline is a single spaced assignment. Then you're going to write a descriptive title. You may already have a descriptive title that you like based on the uh, project selection topic or assignment. If you like it and I approved it, you can stay with it. You can tweak it now to make it a little better if you want. If I didn't approve it, then you need to come up with that nice, bold, centered title. And it should be very descriptive. And I'll show you an example. Then you're going to write an abstract, which is the overall summary of your paper, one or two paragraphs. The abstract is double spaced. Okay. Um, now, generally, the abstract is the very last thing that you write in a scientific paper. What is an abstract? I like to think of the abstract as the elevator speech. You run into your boss in the lobby of an office building and you get onto the elevator with your boss in the lobby and your boss hits the number five. So your boss turns to you as he's waiting for the door to close and says, I hear you just wrote this paper. Tell me about it. You don't want to tell him the conclusions or tell her the conclusions without some context. You need some introduction and some conclusions and you need some, some body. You need the whole thing. How do I summarize the whole thing from introduction through conclusions in one or two paragraphs between now and the fifth floor. You don't have much time. And that's what an abstract does. It provides the most important summary of what the paper is about, what was done or learned in the paper, and what the conclusions were all wrapped up into a tiny little quickie one or two paragraphs. How can you write that effectively unless the paper's done? How can you summarize something that's not even done yet? Well, for an experienced science writer, you always write the abstract last. Paper's all done. Last thing you do, write the abstract. In this case, you are not experienced science writers. And even with some experienced science writers, even doing a rough draft of an abstract in the beginning helps keep you in focus. So you're not tempted to talk about things that you read in the papers that are interesting, but aren't part of your story. Is this piece of information something that fits in with my abstract? Is it part of my story? Does it have a place to hang on my outline? If it doesn't, out of here. Only keep relevant information. So I think writing an abstract at the beginning has some value. Even though it's not the finished abstract, you definitely should rewrite your abstract at the very end. At least writing an abstract now helps keep you focused. What is my story? What is important? What am I trying to say? So then starting at the top of page two, you're going to create your multi-level outline. I want at least three levels in your outline and fill the page. Uh, single spaced, fill the page. So how do I create an outline? Um, if I just start with the number one, so I've typed a title and I'm not going to do name, date, and everything else in the upper right hand corner, but there's my title and I use the number one period space. It automatically creates a numbered list, introduction, 
and then whatever the body of my topic is, and then conclusions. Bingo, I just created a number list. But now for my introduction, I need some detail. So I can hit enter again, tab, tab demotes to the next level in my outline. Shift, hold down the shift key and hit tab, and that promotes it back up. So I can move up and down very easily in an outline. And then for the body, I actually need three parts, body one, body two, body three. And you'll see what I mean by body one, two, and three when I show you an example. So I'm done with my outline. No, I'm not. I'll show you a real one in a moment. Now I'm going to hit enter twice. Once gives me a number six. Twice tells it I'm not continuing with the outline. If it does go to the next number and you can't get rid of it that way, your word processor might behave differently. Now I'm going to, going to go to the next page. Control enter. Control enter inserts what's called a page break. I'm going to go back up and do the show all button, show hide button, and you can see here's the page break. A page break is a hinting, uh, hidden, hidden non-printing character that automatically goes to the top of the next page, where I'm going to say works cited, which is also centered, and put in my references. We're work cited. All right. So please read this information on the assignment. I will post this video here as soon as I'm done. Um, there's a downloaded version of this, which is at the bottom. But please get the articles first, read the articles, read all of these hints, make sure you totally understand what you are doing. Um, I'll explain body in just a moment. The body again is your real story. And so here is the sample outline. Let's look what that looks like. All right, so I've already described the project selection was the first part, the abstract. I just went through a, a lecture on that. Please read this file. Uh, what is an outline and how it is going to help you, please when you're taking notes, when you're reading the papers, don't just copy something and paste it into another file. Copy, paste, copy, paste. It's quick and easy and lazy, and it's not writing. You don't remember that way, and the tendency to write your paper is then to copy and paste it into your paper again. That's plagiarism. You change a few words to make it flow and fit. That's not writing. That is just organizing facts. I'll do that sometimes if I'm organizing notes for something that I want, but it's not my paper. It's just notes that I took from something. Writing requires writing in your own words. And then you are putting it in an outline. Then when you write from the outline, don't look at the original papers when you're writing sentences in the outline. You can go to the papers to look up, what was that number? Was it $2 billion in losses in the United States from that disease, you know, whatever, you know, you can look that up. That's fine. Don't look at the paragraphs and the words, write it in your own words. Um, again, more tips and hints and, and please read through this and think about this. Let me turn off the show hide button. All those non-printing characters make it muddy looking. So I remind you about the tab key and the shift tab for Microsoft Word users. Uh, other word processors do that as well for outlines, but you might have to do it differently if you have a different word processor. So here's an outline. Now I have not included a sample abstract. You can look one up, but the title page, as I described in the assignment, the title page name, date, ABT 92 in the upper right hand corner, the title, and then a paragraph or two. That's it. That's the title page. Then you hit enter. After you're done with the abstract on the title page, you hit 
control enter to go to the top of the next page. And here's the outline. Oh, I actually did include an abstract. Oh, I changed this one. Um, fine, here's an abstract. One of my former students. Um, and you'll notice abstract. It tells you very, very clearly this is what an abstract looks like. Um, and this is just Latin gibberish. You'll note that I do have some citations I threw in there. Uh, yes, you do in-text citations in an abstract. And here's the actual outline. And so the outline, introduction, and then the body is three parts. Water quality, effects on salmon populations and remediation. I'll get into that in a moment. And then conclusions. So I've got introduction and conclusions. Everybody's going to have an introduction. Everybody's going to have conclusions. And then you're going to have three or four things in between those two. If you have five or more, especially more than five, why? What, what are you doing? You're probably not organizing these effectively enough if you have more than uh, three or four parts. So what's my story? This is a science related story that is not plant science, but it's close enough to give you an idea. The effects of watershed runoff on salmon populations in the Pacific Northwest. Perfectly good sciencey topic. So what is the body or story that I'm going to tell? The body of my paper is number one, the water quality issues. What are the water quality issues with these salmon populations? Well, there's temperature, particulate matter in the water, toxins in the water, debris and physical blockages in the waterways, and man-made dams. Those are the five main categories that I'm going to talk about as the water quality issues. Then, after I introduce what those water quality issues are, I am going to talk about what effects those water quality issues have on the salmon populations. They either reduce the population size or they cause mutations and defects in the existing salmon population. Two major issues that I want to bring up in this paper. And then finally, remediation. Remediation is what are we going to do to fix it, to remediate, to correct the problem? What can we or what are we doing to fix it? One, two, three, water quality, what effects the water quality has, and remediation. What are your three or four steps to tell your story? And then you build in underneath those things all of the pieces of information. So as now, now as I'm reading the papers for the second or third time, going back through this, all right, now I have to hang these pieces of information on my outline. I take a piece of information, where does that go? Oh, that piece of information is particulates. That's about water quality, that goes here. So I put a little piece of information there, particulates. Now maybe I might have a little more detail that I might wanna put there. That's up to you, how much detail do you have? But this is a one, two, three, four level outline. I want at least three levels. One, two, three, four levels deep. Now it's not four levels deep everywhere. In my introduction, it's only two levels deep, but I've got three or four levels deep everywhere else besides my conclusions and introduction. All right, so I set the stage. I talk about salmon populations. I talk about what my topic is. I talk about why salmon is sensitive to environmental stresses. I talk about human impact just very briefly. One or two paragraphs, my introduction to my paper. I set the stage, so to speak. Then I tell my story. And once I'm done telling my story, one, two, three, water quality, effects, remediation, then I wrap it up. What are my conclusions? And you'll notice here, this outline is littered with in-text citations. Yours had better be littered with in-text citations as well. Now these are CSE style in-text citations. They would look a little different for 
uh, MLA or APA, but you know, use whatever format the in-text citation should look like for the style you are using. All right, and I avoid requiring a specific style because you don't have to have English 1A under your belt already. And English 1A teaches MLA style formatting. And maybe you haven't had any, maybe this is your first chance, maybe you're in a discipline where uh, they use APA or some other format as opposed to MLA. Learn on whatever system is best beneficial to you, all right? But I wanna see lots of in-text citations. And almost every line has something except a category, effects on salmon populations. That's not information, that's just, that's a category. What are the effects? I'm not going to cite a category because there's nothing there. But I have actual data on how these impacts have affected population sizes in salmon populations in the Pacific Northwest over whatever period of time I'm talking about. So I have a paper that talks about some real data. That goes right here. And I know that it is Hong and Wong 2005. Is there really a paper Hong and Wong 2005? Yes, has nothing to do with salmon populations. I took some papers and just totally made this up. The whole paper is just completely made up, this whole outline, um, including my student, unfortunately. Um, but for example, Hong and Wong 2005, there it is. Um, Forest Management and Watershed Area, Areas Journal of Forestry. That's not what the paper is about. You'll notice here it is from biomedical, biomedcentral.com. Again, I just totally made these things up. I took some real um, uh, papers. I shoved them into a works cited here and notice they're hanging indents. And I just changed the title so they sort of fit with my topic made up. But you get the idea. There's some notes, please read the notes, some other things that could be useful when creating your outline and abstract and you've got some time to work on this but you're going to need it this should be one of the biggest investment chunks of time for your term project once you get this out of the way if you do a good job on your outline taking notes organizing the outline uh, actually writing the paper and doing the final oral presentation recording you're going to record a video of you teaching this to your fellow classmates. That stuff should be pretty easy. All right. So that is it for abstract and outline assignment. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me, or you can contact the uh, Panther Learning Lab for more help.